Hey there, Amy394. Matthew here. So, I know one of the things that many of you talk, talked about wanting to know more about is audio analysis and working with audio here in Touch Designer. And so I wanted to take some time for us to look at how we can build uh, an audio analysis tool that you might use inside of one of your projects. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to build something that's really similar, is in fact is um, almost exactly uh, the way that Mary Frank builds her audio analysis tool that's inside of Rouge. And so I just want us to kind of make this ourselves and go through the process of understanding what on earth we're up to um, in doing that and have a kind of finer understanding of what Mary's done in building that audio analysis module. So to get started here, let's go ahead and start um, by getting rid of all of that stuff there in our network and let's add a new container to our network. We're just going to dive right in. And let's call this uh, audio. And we can kind of move inside this container. And we'll build inside here all the elements that we need uh, so that we can grab them some other place. So for us to get started, um, first we need to actually get some audio here into our network. Uh, and I think to kind of address two of the things that I've heard you guys talk about, I want us to look at both um, the audio device in, um, as well as uh, the audio file in, chop, because we're going to want to take a look at both of these. So the audio device in is how we actually get um, things like microphones and other audio inputs here into our computer. So my microphone right now is configured to record on another machine, which is why we're not seeing any audio show up here. But if we did have a microphone attached that could be um, to the machine that we're working on, as we'll do in class, we would actually see this moving, um, corresponding to what's going on with the audio input. Um, here, an audio file in, this is actually uh, grabbing an audio file and playing it back. And you'll notice that we're not hearing any of that, and that, again, is partially because of the way that um, my system is configured right now to capture the video from this. Um, but what is also important uh, for us to be able to hear any audio is that we actually need an audio device out. So while we can um, kind of grab an audio file or an audio um, input, we actually have to um, play that to a, a device, right? Like we need to tell it to go to some speakers or some headphones or anything like that in order to actually hear it. So we're going to use the audio device out here in just a moment. While we're still getting started, uh, we can see we've got this audio device in, right? And this is allowing us to capture um, from our machine. In this case, it's picking the default device. If you had multiple devices attached, you'd be able to select the device that you actually wanted to grab. And when it comes to our audio file, um, we can see here that we're grabbing this um, example file that's included with Touch Designer. And we can see that's coming out of um, Jeremy Caulfield, www.domunit.com, uh, this audio sample already. So we could change that if we had an audio file that we wanted to use. Um, we could actually just change the pathway to that. And we'll look at that in class a little bit more closely. For right now, we can go ahead and um, just work with these two inputs. So out the gate, one of the things that we might want to have is we might want to have either the ability to listen to uh, an input, right? So either a microphone or an input uh, that's attached to our computer or to an audio file. And we're going to build this so that we could work with either of those. So the first ingredient here is we need a switch. And we're going to go ahead and attach a switch here and we'll connect both of these things um, over here so that we can switch between which one of those that we want. Uh, so what the, one of the things I want to think about is I want to think about how I can start to build uh, my interface here as I go along, right? So let's go ahead and start this by, let's add a container. And we're going to make this container uh, 50 pixels wide and 102 pixels tall. I kind of know right away that I'm going to want this to be organized top to bottom. I'm going to want the alignment order to be two. And now let's dive in here and let's add two buttons. And we know, I know a couple things here, right? I know that I'm going to want this to be radio down. Oops. And I want this to be based on me dot digits. Oops. Not <laughs> digits. Digits. And uh, I know that I'm going to want a second one of those. Let's take a look inside at this button. And I'm going to want to call this one 
life mic. I'm going to use word wrap. I'm going to look at this other one. Let's call this one audio file. Audio file. We'll also use the word wrap on this one. Great. And we're going to make sure that the alignment order is set to two here. Oops. Alignment margin, excuse me. There we go. And so now we've got this radio button set up, right? So in the past, what we've done is we've used the panel chop. And in using the panel chop, we take a look here. We'll open up the sky. And we can see that we have got uh, a radio value that corresponds, right? So here we've got radio button 0 is active, and audio file is radio 1. So we could actually leave this here and use an out to grab it. Um, but I want us to look at one other way that we could actually get a hold of that same information. And we can use that same information without actually having to dive uh, inside of our panel. We could instead, here in our switch, we could write an expression. And let's call this something that's a little bit easier to work with instead of container. So instead of container, we're going to go ahead and give this a name uh, like input switch. And we'll scoot this over here a little bit closer. And for our switch, we're going to ask for the operator that's called input switch. And in this case, we're going to ask for the panel, the panel value that's radio. Right, so now rather than having to do all of that other stuff, we can actually just use this single expression to get to that particular panel value that we want. Great. So the next thing that we're going to go ahead and add here is let's add a slider. And um, let's dive into this slider and let's add a text top because we're going to want to have a name and we're going to make sure that it's its parent's width oops need that parent uh, par dot w and its height me dot parent par yeah, 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 dot h, there we go. I know that I want this to say volume. And I'm going to go ahead and trust this to auto fit. And we'll go ahead here for our slider. And we'll use, um, da -da -ba -dum -ba -dum for the panel, let's use text one for the background. Excellent. So now we've got a volume slider. And we're going to go ahead and use this volume slider to drive the volume of all this. So we're going to add a math here. Oops. And we'll pull this. We can actually leave it right over here. And for our multiply, we're actually going to use this slider to drive that. And the reason that we're doing that here, well, we'll see why we're doing that here in a second. Um, so let's go ahead and yeah, let's hear in here. What we'll do is we'll ask for the operator that's called slider one and in slider one, we want out one and out of that, we want the channel that's V one. Great. So the reason that we're doing um, our kind of multiply here is that this is going to allow us to uh, do a couple of different kinds of things, right? Because um, while we want to be able to control the audio um, like volume, and we'll look at that when we're actually dealing with the audio device out, this, uh, what we're doing here is we're actually kind of doing some gain scaling uh, with our kind of um, audio analysis. Uh, and that might be useful for you, it might not be useful for you, it's just one other handy trick to kind of have up your sleeve, especially because um, this will allow you to scale either the audio file or the live mic input. 
Okay, great. So the last thing we'll do here is we'll go ahead and let's attach our switch here to our audio device out. So this is actually then driving uh, the audio to our output. And we can use this output from the volume here to drive the second input over here, which is also the volume of the output. Oops, and actually let's make sure that in this math, it looks like I accidentally connected that switch. Oh bother, let's fix that. Just want the switch, Whew. okay. So now our slider both controls the volume that's going to our device output and it also controls the gain scaling uh, that's going to all of our analysis. Excellent. So now what we need to do is now we need to build um, some low pass filters. We're going to use, well, not low pass filters, excuse me. We're going to use some uh, audio EQs to separate out the different frequencies so we can see high mids and lows coming out of all of this. Okay, so to get started there, what we're going to work with is EQ, audio, where are you? Band EQ. There you are. So our band EQ, we've got an input that's our channels that we want to filter and filter uh, animation channels. We're not going to worry about the second input right now. We're just going to connect to this first one. And let's go ahead and uh, here, let's make sure that we're uh, dealing with this guy. Excellent. And in looking at what's going on here, uh, we're going to start by thinking about our base um, kind of frequencies and isolating the, the base frequencies. So our band EQ, uh, we can see how it's broken into hertz and kilohertz. And what we're uh, wanting to think about is how we uh, mute or how we kind of um, obscure some elements or some uh, levels of the audio and kind of bump up other pieces of that. And we're going to think about how we break that into high mids and lows. So we're going to start here with our lows um, and in doing that we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn down to zero all these guys at the top. On our lows page we're actually going to turn up some of these guys here at the end. We're going to have fall off here a little bit at the top and we're going to make this one zero. So we've got this kind of uh, curve shape here to our low frequencies. Let's go ahead and take that same operator, make a copy of it. And now we need to think about the same kind of thing that we want to do for our mids. So this time around we're going to go ahead and turn down our base frequencies we're going to go ahead and start to think about building a little bit of shape here at the end of this. We want to have some solid mids. And then again we want to have a little bit of a tapering off here. Right, so you can see how we've got kind of, we're ramping in. We've got some solid mids. And you can imagine that we want to do a similar kind of thing here with our highs. And in our highs, let's go ahead and make sure that we're zeros all across the board here. Oops, missed that on these guys. Zero, zero, zero. Zero. It should be point six eight seven one. Oh bother. Oh, I totally messed that up, guys. Uh, hold on here. Let me fix all this. All right, so this should be two, two, two. Uh, one. And this one should be two, 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 one. Let's do point five, zero. And then all of these can be knocked out. Good. And then our mids. We've got 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.6871, uh, we need 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 0.61, oops, 617. And then our highs should be zeros all across the board in the lows, and 
let's do 0 0.617 0 .6 here and 111 there at the top. Okay, so that should give us some nice um, kind of splitting here with our kind of audio signal. The next thing that we're going to want to do in all of this is let's add some envelopes to this because we want to kind of even out some of this a little bit. And we're going to give this an envelope width of 1. And I'm just kind of blasting through this, right? So we've got a little bit of envelope action going on here. Let's resample this because we've got too many samples in there for it to really to be useful for us. So we've got a sample rate of 60. That looks good. Next, what we're going to do is let's do a little more math. So we're going to take our math here. And I'm just going to make the copies of that here to get started. And in the math, what I want to do is I want to make sure that all of my values coming into this are positive. I don't want any negative values, right? So I'm kind of taking the absolute value of everything that's coming in. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my stereo channels together. I'm going to add my left and right together. Um, rather than do that three times, I'm just going to copy paste those guys. I'll delete that first channel and that way we can connect here. Great. We're going to add one more filter. And we're going to give that a filter width of 0.2. It says it's going to give make this just a little bit smoother, right? That's part of what we're after. And then finally, in all of this game, finally what we want to start to think about is how we want to rename these. So next we're going to add a rename chop. And we want three of those. Excellent. I'm going to call this low, mid, and high. Let's add a merge. So we can put all three of these together, bang in, and let's finally end all of this with a null. And we're going to call this null uh, final. All right, so that's like a really fast kind of slam dunk way through all of this, right? But it gives us the high mids and lows. We can kind of see what's going on there uh, in our audio file a little bit. And while we're at it, let's do one other thing, right? Because if we back out of this, Okay, well, let's first, let's fix this thing a little bit, right? Because this is a little bit ugly the way these are stacked. So let's go ahead and align these um, maybe top to bottom. Um, and, you know, I think in, a, in an ideal world, probably what I want is I want these to be a little bit skinnier, um, but all the same width. So let's take a look at this guy for a second. This is 100 wide. So let's go ahead and take our buttons uh, and let's make those 100 wide. But we could probably make them a little bit narrower. We could probably make them more like uh, 40 tall. In fact, let's go ahead and knock them down to 30, um, which means we're going to have to re-adjust something here also, right? So let's make sure that we fix this. So it's 100 wide, and we probably only need this to be 62 tall. There we go. And that matches a little bit better. Oh, yeah, that feels a little better there. Let's give this an align margin of 2, so our volume feels like it matches a little bit better. Right, okay, that's looking, that's looking pretty okay so far. Um, I think one of the things I want uh, is I'm actually going to want, you know, it would, this is like such a little small detail, right, but it would just really make my day if our fonts matched. Um, so let's make sure that we're, so, so this is Veranda. And let's see if we can make sure that our this guy matches. Oh, it's also veranda. Mm, it's just so much larger. Let's like cut the size of it in half and do no auto fit. And yeah, maybe more like 10. Does that feel like it's closer to that? Yeah, that feels a little bit closer to the same kind of look and feel of it, uh, which is making me feel better. I don't like it when it's all wonky and different. <laughs> all right. So I know that's like so nitpicky, but you know, it's the aesthetics matter. 
The next thing I want to think about is I would love to have a little bit of kind of some visual feedback about what's going on in this guy. So let's take a look at a top that we haven't used before. Uh, and the top that I want to pull out here is an op viewer. So our op viewer allows us to take any operator and, and make a little viewer out of it, right? Like we're actually going to draw this as uh, a, a text file or as a texture. So there we can see we've actually have something that shows up. Let's go ahead and give this the dimensions of its parent. Me parent par dot width. Oops, I think I've got an extra period in there. Yep. Me parent par height. And let's call this guy, oops, BG for a background, please. Oh my goodness gracious. And now we can move up here. We could take this and we can say it's panel, panel, background, WBG. All right, that's feeling a little bit better. And actually what I want to do is I would love, let's do one other crazy thing here. Let's add one more container and let's parent these guys to it. Because that way we can do something a little bit nicer, I think, with this. We'll take the alignment order or the align rather, and let's do top to bottom again. And two, and then we need to make this the size of these guys. So this one's a hundred, and this one's, uh, right. This one is, oops, 62 tall. This one's 20 tall. So we need it to be 62 plus 20. And we probably need two more in there to make up for that extra two. So let's add two more. Perfect. And we know it only needs to be 100 wide. Excellent. And what we could do is we could give this guy here in color, let's give it a border. So we've got some borders to it. And let's make sure that our borders are on top. There we go. Our borders show up on top of this whole thing. Let's make it viewer active. Yep, good, it's working. Volume's working here. Liking that. All right. Yeah, much better. And while we're at it, let's give it a background. Let's turn up its background alpha, rather. So now we can see that it's actually something that lives right here on top. And we could take this and let's, in our layout, let's go ahead and put this at the bottom. I think I like it there a little bit better. Yeah, okay, that f that's at least a little more uh, kind of like concise, right? So now we actually have something where we've got uh, our ability out the gate to switch between uh, dealing with a live mic, uh, where there's nothing coming into this right now, right? To deal with an audio file, and then also to have a little bit of uh, gain scaling kind of built into this. So what are the other things that we might want to think about, right? Like maybe we can expand the size of this panel a little bit because one of the other things I've uh, heard you guys ask about um, would be is how do we change up different audio files? So while we're kind of on a roll here, let's think about what we might do in terms of adding different audio files into the mix here. We can kind of just build out our control panel a little bit more. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of stick with the same idea. We're going to take this and make a copy of it. Only we'll come in here and we'll, uh, yeah, we're going to, well, let's save one and delete one. Because what I want to do is I'm going to come in here and let's go ahead and I'm just going to call this, uh, well, you know what, let's be fancy, why don't we? What I'm going to want to do is I'm going to grab a table dat. And this table dat, let's go ahead and let's give it some exact dimensions. So I'm going to want it to have... Uh, for right now, let's say three rows, two columns for sure. And here, let's call this uh, audio file and, and path. And actually, we can just simplify this. We can call it file and path, all lowercase. It'll make it just easier at the end of the day. Let's split our viewer here. Whoa, too many rows. Um, and let's take a look inside of our button. And for our button, what we'll do is we'll use this table as the dat that feeds it. And we'll take the row, and the row index that we want to do is uh, me.parent 
dot digits. Excellent. And we'll make sure this button, you can probably guess what's going to happen here, is a clone of itself. So that means that we can make a copy of it and it's still looking at this table. Let's go ahead and close this guy. Perfect. All right, and while we're here, let's go ahead and track down some audio files. So where do I have some audio files? I know I've got this one here, right? And I've just kind of dragged it into my network um, and it's put a bunch of stuff in here and I'm cheating because really what I want is I want to copy the pathway here for this file. So I can add that in. I don't actually need that anymore. And here I'm going to call that all about that base. Perfect. And I think I've got another audio file. Where do I have another audio file? I think, ah, perfect. Mary's got a lovely audio file here that I'm going to grab uh, real fast. I think. Ooh, hopefully I'm going to grab that real fast. Ha, ah, there it is. Perfect. And again, I'm only using this for an example. In a perfect world, you'd actually have your audio files uh, all maybe in one folder or in an easy-to-access location. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this pathway, and I'm going to plug that in here. So I've got it kind of ready to go for me. And what's this one called? This one's called LAPS. Great. And we'll call this one LAPS. Excellent. So now I've got these two buttons, right? Um, and let's, we should probably make them actually a little bit taller to compensate for the fact that if we've got two lines of text there, it'll be easier to work with. Great. And I can see that there, these buttons, right, are going to go ahead and grab for me. They're going to do some very handy work. And they're going to grab their uh, names here based on this stat. And this path is going to be important because we're going to use that path. Oops, we're going to need to fix the size of this guy. 82. Um, we're going to use that path to populate what's going on over here in our audio file. Right, so the idea that we're going to kind of hold on to is just like what we did before. Um, just how we, in the kind of last round, we were picking pictures to change uh, a parameter here. We're going to use that same idea this time around. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Let's open up a, a kind of split window so we can look at what's going on. Let's grab a panel execute dat. And we should be able to rely again on the same state change to make this happen. We're only going to want to do this when we, ha when we run from off to on. And we're going to make a little more room where we can actually do write some of the scripts for this. OK, so first of all, um, let's define our source. So I want file, right? the file that I'm referencing. I want that to equal this guy over here. So that's going to correspond to my digits, and it's going to live in this table. So file is going to uh, be equal to the operator that is the network above me in table 1. In the row, um, that's my parents' digits parent digits, and in the column, that's called path. And we can really, really, you know, real fast, let's go ahead and test this. So let's print file to make sure that we're actually doing this right. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and open up my text port and dats. Let's make these active. And sure enough, I'm going to get that file. Excellent. That's what I want. Next up here, let's go ahead and define our target. Right, so let's call this audio player. And audio player is the operator that is not one, but two networks above me called audio file in. 
one. Haha, <laughs> audio file in one. Perfect. All right. And so whenever I'm clicked, what I want to have happen is I want audio player p l a y e r audio player dot par dot file and let's make sure that's true. So that's audio player yep audio player this guy and the parameter called file and I want that to be equal to file because we defined our file right here. Okay, so. With any luck, that should mean that when we come up here and make these guys here active. Oh, oh, we've got an error. I love it. All right, error reading file, audio file file. Okay, well that so there's an error reading that file. Ah, lovely. So we can see that we're bouncing between these two files. Excellent. And we're actually loading that whole file into RAM, and then we're starting it from the very beginning. Uh, which for right now, uh, you know, we're pretty happy with that. Like, we might want that to be different, right, if we had a different kind of setup. But for this go-around, uh, this gives us an ability to kind of bounce and bounce back and forth between multiple files. If we wanted to add another audio file to the mix here, right, we would just have to add another row in the table. And then when we added another row in the table, um, we'd add another button. If you want to be really fancy about that, you could use a replicator like we practiced the other day. And then uh, whenever you change this table, it would uh, go ahead and make those additional buttons for you. Okay, so let's look at one other thing here, right? Let's go ahead and in here, um, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and... Actually, let's do this. Let's go ahead and maybe what we can do instead is we can think about how we can make these look a little bit different. So here, let's go ahead and take this guy and for its panel, or for its color rather, let's go ahead and turn his borders on. Because I'd like these to be at least a little bit different. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put the borders on top. And let's give this a border color that's maybe like blue. Let's, we can try that out, right? And this guy, let's do this uh, kind of the same idea, right? Let's give him some border colors. Borders A, A, A. Great. And we'll put those on top of everything. And maybe we'll make these guys orange. Right, it's a subtle difference, but at least gives us a little bit of a uh, kind of visual cue to what's going on here. And we need to make the uh, this guy a little bit bigger, right? So we know this one is... Um, what, 62 tall, and this one is going to be, I think, 82 tall. So let's come over here, and we could add another 82 to this, which really means we probably need to add two more to account for our additional space in here. There we go. Now, when we come out here, aha, yeah, now we're starting to, to have something that looks a little bit better. Right, so now we can see that we've got two different audio files to choose from, a live mic or an audio file. We might even want to do something crazy, like come in here and add another container. And what's the size of this guy? This is 100 wide. We could make this one maybe like 30, 30 wide. Mm, we could probably do like 20, whoops, 25. At this point, we're going to start to get into like the nitty-gritty of it, right? Because really what I'm up to at this point is I'm thinking about how do I kind of communicate what's going on in here? Because I'm going to add a, a text top. And this is our inputs. Input select. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to have its parents attributes, meet up parent, par, width, oops, too many periods in there. Me parent, parent, dot par, dot height, parent, not parent. And let's go ahead and turn that down a little bit. Excellent. And we can set this to have a background. That's text one. Oop, that's still just a little bit too big. 
perfect, which means that the size of this guy, right, so this, now it's just kind of getting fuzzy. So we have to make sure that it's all uh, sized correctly. So this needs to have another 25 added to it and another 2 added to that for the offsets here. And we do the same kind of thing. I'm just going to go ahead and steal this and drop it in here. Right, and instead of input selects, we can go ahead and change this to be audio file. Great. And that means that this would need to be, need to add 25 and 2. Great. And now this guy's got a total of 89. Right, so maybe we should just go ahead and start over with the math there because it's getting a little bit messy. Um, but we know this one is going to be a height of 20. So let's do 20. And this one's going to be a height of 89. 89. And this one's got a height of 109. Oops. This should be 20 plus 89 plus 109. Great. And now we just need to add in the offset for these guys. Plus 4, I think. There we go. And so now we're starting to get to a place where we've got, um, mm, ideally, well, volume's kind of its own thing. But now we can start to see that we're breaking up these um, sections to have some labels that are associated with them also. We might even, at this point, we might decide, you know what, actually, I want to put this on the top after all. And I think I want to shrink this thing so that it's uh, not the whole width here. Mm. Right? Like, ooh, um, I don't know, I could go back and forth on that. Maybe what we want to do is we just want to make this guy, we want to let this take up the whole height of this thing. So rather than all this futzing, let's just go ahead and say, you know what, you're going to be 300 tall no matter what. And now we can see that we've got a control panel over here on the left-hand side, and we've got some visual kind of feedback about what's going on here inside of our uh, audio analysis tool. Excellent. So that kind of walked us through how we might build a little an audio analysis component that we could use and reuse, um, as well as how we could use this to have access to a live microphone or an audio file, and then move between multiple audio files. So I know that moved uh, all pretty quickly, but we'll cover it in class, uh, and then I'll also make sure that I'll post this example so you can take a look at it. All right. Happy programming, everyone.